Hey everyone, welcome back for another recap series of The Real Housewives. This week, it is finally here, what I have been waiting for, Real Housewives of New York, episode one. I'm so excited. Um, I love New York. If you guys don't know, let me talk about New York for a minute because I love New York. Um, New York was literally, Real Housewives of New York is literally the reason I love Bravo and watch Housewives in general. Um, I have been watching it way before. I probably should have been watching Real Housewives of New York uh, or Real Housewives in general. It's like nostalgic for me, the old seasons with the OG cast. I love them all so much. So, and I honestly really like the new cast. Last season, I was really shocked and so excited for the revamp. Um, so yeah, and then here we are, season two of the new cast. Technically it's season like 15 or something, but it's season two of the new cast. So that's why I'm saying that. We're just gonna jump right into it. I said this in my video about Salt Lake. These episodes were like an hour long and I don't know if that's normally how long they are and I didn't notice, but the Salt Lake one kind of dragged. This one was a little bit better because they're also introducing a couple of new people like Raquel and Rebecca Minkoff. There was a little bit more introduction and stuff that was going on um as well as it kind of let's just get right into it let's get right into the episode one because it starts off with um a flash forward i guess yeah flash forward <laughs> flash forward flash backward technically it's flash backward from now flash forward from where the season starts and it shows uh they're doing their photographs and their prep and stuff for the intro to new york to real housewives and um and it shows Uba and Bryn are obviously not happy with each other, are staying on opposite sides of the room, not talking. Everybody's like kind of whispering about it, like, what's going on, you know? I think they had just, it seemed like they had just come back from a um, their cast trip and maybe had, it seems like that's where things start to blow up on the cast trip. I feel like always oh, Uba on the trip. I don't know, maybe traveling makes her uneasy. I feel like she just, she's always getting activated <laughs> on the on the cast trip. Bryn is obviously kind of on the outs with most of the cast, it seems like this season, except for maybe Jenna and Jessel. It seems like, I feel like Jessel, she'll lose Jessel pretty soon. Jenna's a little bit more easygoing, so I feel like she's not gonna quite cut Bryn out the way maybe the, the rest of them have. Um, but anyway, let's get right into it. We see Bryn's apartment. Um, she's got a new apartment, gorgeous. So gorgeous, beautiful. And uh, I, I wrote, Bryn is literally the Sonia Morgan of the recast. She's just the like bubbly, fun. I can't hate, it's so hard. Like even when Bryn is not really, like through this whole episode, it's like she is just messing up and talking crap. But I can't be mad at her. It's like Sonia. It's like you can't even really be mad at her because they're just so funny and bubbly and whatever. Bryn's got a little bit more of a, I won't say mean streak. That seems too harsh. But she's she's got a little bit more edge to her than Sonia did. So we'll see. We'll see. But so far, I love Bryn. It's hard to be mad at her. Then it goes to flash to Jessel. I have such a hard time liking Jessel. I kind of, the second time I watched last season, I came around a little bit to Jessel. I felt like everybody was being a little bit hard on her and mean, but then it's stuff like this that just annoys me. Her the whole way, just complaining about being on the subway and stuff. It was like, honey, aren't you from like London? You never took the tube. You never took the tube, darling. <laughs> That's my British accent. You never took the tube. Like, I don't, it's like, why are you acting like this is the first time you've ever been on a subway? Are you serious? You're a New Yorker and you've never been on the subway? Also, just like watching Pavit and Jessel interact makes me very uncomfortable. Like last season, I felt like people were projecting maybe a little bit on them of how a relationship should be. And I thought, I was like, they're just, they, they were friends and they're still friends, but married and they have kids. So like maybe their way of like showing affection is just different than everybody else. But watching them go to this, place in like Chinatown or wherever it was and having lunch was just very uncomfortable. I just, it makes me feel like they don't even really like each other. I don't, I don't know. Their relationship seems very odd to me. I don't understand it. Pava just seems like really over her and done. I don't know. And they're just such different personalities. Like Jessel is very, uh, I don't know what, I don't know yet, prissy. I don't know what you would call it. Like she's just very like uptight. Pava's a little bit more laid back. Um, but I don't really, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand these two 
together. And then we flash to um, Aaron and Uba now are back again, friends again, not on the rocks like they were last season uh, after the cast trip. And uh, Rebecca Minkoff comes and joins them for lunch. I was kind of shocked. Rebecca is very, she seems very timid already, like right off the bat. She seems like very shy. Not really, I mean, I, I hope she opens up a little bit. This this first episode, she was very quiet. Like Raquel was much more outgoing than Rebecca was. So I'll be interested to see Rebecca opens up a little bit more. I'm also glad to see Uba's opening up about her. I'm assuming it's the same guy from last year, the Connecticut guy, Connecticut man. Um, and it's nice that they're like really happy together. It seems as though like I said earlier, it seems as though Bryn is kind of on the outs with everyone, except for, like I said, Jessel and Jenna. But even that's questionable because Jenna's kind of playing both sides of the fence too. Jenna and Jessel, because they're kind of going back to everybody being like, this is what Bryn said. I also wrote these <laughs> damn podcasts. Um, it's literally every housewife show. It's like there's some somebody who went on a podcast and talked crap about somebody else and that's you know the whole damn storyline is about some damn podcast also i wrote like uh i wrote later because it comes up because bryn was so upset about like what jeff lewis said on this podcast with aaron and i'm like it's jeff lewis first of all i'm like jeff lewis is like the cattiest bitch on bravo i was like are you kidding i was like do you know anything about jeff lewis? i was like who why do you care about what he says like i, I don't know it's just like i i love jeff lewis but like he is a catty bitch. I'm sorry. I love you, Jeff, but I don't even think he would deny that. I mean, come on. It's like, really? We're going to be upset about Jeff Lewis? Okay, whatever. I really don't even think like the clips that they showed, I don't even, I really don't feel like anything they said was that bad. Yes, the insinuation that she was getting her money from some guy, she was a sugar baby, was maybe a bit rude, but like, I, I think it's in I think it's in question by a lot of people because I know last year I think she had to defend Bryn had to defend how she makes money to people. I think it is a little bit in question, not only from your castmates, but also from the audience. Like, how do you make money? Because we don't really see I don't know, we just don't really see her doing any of that. So it's it is questionable. It's like how do you how do you get all this money? Especially living in New York, and it's not cheap. But anyway, and then there was also this story that supposedly Aaron had told Bryn. I don't know who she even told. I was so confused. It was all a bunch of he said, she said stuff that I just could not keep up with in this episode. Um, Aaron told somebody, <laughs> was talking crap supposedly about Jenna and how she had to get her uh, an Uber and send her home in the Hamptons. I have no idea. And she claims it was $250. That was the most shocking. I was like $250? That shocked me more than anything. What? I was thinking like, what? Jenna just needs to send her a little Venmo, 20 bucks or whatever. $200? Is that really how much Uber is in the Hamptons? $200? That's crazy. Unless like maybe they live on completely opposite parts of the Hamptons, but oh my God, I was like, whoa, $200. And then just quickly, we met Raquel. Uh, Raquel comes over to Jenna's home, lovely home. And uh, we get introduced to her as a character. She's an uh, she's an art curator. I almost said an artist. She might be an artist. She's an art curator. I love her already. She's like very New York to me. She's very like, like when she brought up in Just Like That, I was like, she seems like she could be a character on Just Like That. Like she just has that very like New York vibe to her. I love her already. Then I know I'm kind of jumping around a lot because I didn't have a lot of like in-depth notes I felt like I, I had. Um, to get out. It was just like little things that happened throughout the whole episode. So that's why I'm kind of being choppy. Like, and I, and I always say this, first episodes are a lot of, it's, it can be a lot of fluff. So it's a lot of fluff. This one feels like it's a better setup than Salt Lake and OC were, but it's a better setup for like the rest of the season. We see Abe and Aaron uh, getting ice cream with their kids. And um, I said, it seems like they're on the rocks. And I'm telling you, it's the curse of the renewal. You do not get your vows renewed on Housewives. That is a curse. You just, you don't go there. Um, <laughs> the only person who has survived it so far is Karen Huger. <laughs> I don't think anybody else has survived 
the renewal curse on um housewives so yeah uh and i was like why is she being weird about the like drugs kind of the mushrooms comment that he made but then i was like no something is happening that's deeper that obviously they kind of flash forward um at the end they do the preview of the upcoming season and we see them get in a fight about something i don't know if like he cheated on her i have i don't know what's going on so we'll see what's that about and then at the end of the episode um Brynn is having a party for her brother and everybody comes I just thought it was gonna be the ladies apparently it was the ladies plus all of their significant others um and Brynn ended up leaving she got in a fight with like Aaron and pretty much everybody um because she's on the outs with everybody about this podcast etc etc and she ends up leaving before even Uba makes it to the party just it's like the host left the party before everybody else. But yeah, I said, you know, I don't understand why she's upset about this podcast. And I feel like, I don't know, Brynn is just making a lot of enemies this season. I don't really like to see it because I love Brynn, but... And then obviously we see her at the very end, the preview that they did, her getting a fight with Uba. So I have no doubt that this is this fight between Brynn versus the world is not gonna end anytime soon. <clears throat> it was also so funny to see Rebecca Minkoff and a little bit of, um, Raquel also, I feel like didn't really know how to insert themselves into any of the arguments that were happening because it was a lot of stuff that happened prior to them even really being a part of the cast. So anyway, that is kind of all I really have to say in the episode. Let me know what you guys think. I'm really excited for New York. I hope it's not just about, it doesn't seem like it'll just be about this podcast thing. So hopefully um, we can move on. They always seem to like make up and move on and then something else happens. Um, thank you for watching and I will try to get this out as soon as possible. I'm already behind this week, but uh, yeah. So thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. It's reality TV. It's not that serious. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.